So welcome to my review of Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise by Sega. And I got a lot to talk about today. I thought I'd just give a, a little bit of a backstory about my experience with Fist of the North Star, which is an anime uh, manga series from 1983. It ran for about five years. Lots of manga adaptations, lots of stuff going on here. I'm just gonna give a backstory to 1988, nearly 30 years ago for me. I was at a, at a comic book convention and there was this little back room, and it's really seedy back room. And I kind of went into it saying, what's going on over here? And they had a wooden television and they were showing Fist of the North Star on VHS. And this is in the days when there was no subtitles. A guy was standing next to the screen explaining what was going on. And I sat down and there might've been five people in there. And this was the most incredible thing I'd ever seen. I mean, this guy explained to me, he's like, it's like Mad Max meets Bruce Lee meets Schwarzenegger and all these kinds of stereotypes into one. And I'm like, go on. And as I start to watch it, Ken Shiro, the main character, will hit people with pressure points and they will explode in blood and guts. And as a 14 year old boy, I was in love. I thought this was the greatest show I had ever seen. And I never was able to see it after that, but I got a game one uh, for Christmas one year called Last Battle with my Genesis. And I was like, oh cool, this is gonna be a really fun action game. Little did I know that this was a Fist of the North Star game. I didn't know that. And the Japanese version had a lot more blood and guts where I'm getting to it, I'm getting to it. Over the years, most of these Fist of the North Star games have always been beat-em-ups where you're just fighting wave after wave of enemies. I picked up this one on the PS3 years ago. I loved it, but what you're doing is fighting wave after wave of enemies. And they're exploding in blood, and it's great. So that's what I was expecting with Lost Paradise. I jumped in thinking, okay, it's gonna be wave after wave of enemies, and then a boss encounter, and wave after wave of enemies. I was very, very wrong. I have never been so wrong, and that was an exciting thing for me, because I started to play this game expecting one thing, but it was so much more. And let me say right now, this is gonna be a bit of a sleeper hit. I think there's a lot of big games out this Christmas and everybody's gonna pass up Fist of the North Star to play like Spider-Man's and God of Wars and all these types of style of games, which are great games. But Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise is a great game. The credits just rolled for me half an hour ago. I was moved. I, I really had an incredible time with this game, and I, I'm going to tell you all the reasons why. First of all, the style of gameplay that this is, is more of a Yakuza-style game. So you play as Ken Shiro, and you're wandering the desert, you're looking for your love interest, Yuria, and you come across this great city of Eden, and you enter in there, and you get involved in all of these different characters, within the world, within the city, outside of the city, people you're related to. And I've never honestly seen all of the story elements of Fist of the North Star. And for them all to come together in this way, in this particular way, was so amazing for me after 30 years to be able to experience this. And there's a lot going on here. So there's the story, which is really good. I was completely into the story from the beginning to the end. I never skipped any cinematics. I read everything, great voice acting. There's English voice acting, there's Japanese voice acting. There's another thing I wanna say about this game. There's two different kinds of uh, blood modes. There's mild and then there's extreme. I obviously went for extreme because you gotta have that. That is the Fist of the North Star experience that you need to have. So the hub world is really Eden, the main city, and you end up getting uh, a room there, and you're exploring the city, you're going on quests. This game is quite big in scope. This is a leveling up system. This is a bit of an RPG. There's a racing element. I am, I've, been, I've never been so completely caught off guard by a game, really. And I've never enjoyed a game so much that I thought was just gonna be so average. It was really an experience, and so, Yes, you play as Ken Shiro, you'll be wandering the city, and thugs will attack you, and that's when you get into combat, and that's the main bread and butter of this game. You can sidestep, you can kick, you can punch, and then you can do the most amazing quick time finishing moves. 
So you'll grab a guy from behind, you'll hit the circle button, you'll go into doing your finishing move, and you'll have to hit a series of buttons sequentially to get a great score and to do an awesome finisher on your opponent. And oh my god, does it ever feel good when you grab somebody who's been beating the crap out of you and you do your like your pressure points on them and you turn around and you go, you're already dead and they explode in blood. This is this is a violence game. I really can't stress that enough. I love ultra violence in video games and in movies, but there was a few times that even myself looked away from a cinematic and I was like, holy cow, I can't believe they just did that. So if you feel that video games have become a little bit too uh, mediocre and a little too safe, this is not that game. This is extreme, it's over the top, it's wonderful. Uh, this is a post-apocalyptic Mad Max style world where everybody's trying to kill each other and you're caught in between. And you can buy items, you can buy healing items, you can buy outfits for yourself to improve your defense, you can get a buggy that you can use to traverse the wastelands, and there's a lot of stuff to do out there. There's a lot of items to collect out there. You can merge a lot of those items and create different items. You can upgrade your buggy. You can change the color on it. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm not even scratching the surface here. There's Kenshiro alone for his own abilities. Even the first playthrough through the game, you will not unlock all of them. They're a grid system, uh, basically. You'll earn orbs throughout beating the crap out of people and you'll use those orbs to increase your abilities and unlock other abilities. And the first time through the game, I probably unlocked maybe 50% if that. And a new game plus mode opens up where you can go through the game again. As you can see, I'm very enthusiastic about this. Even my wife kept walking in. She's like, wow, you're really into this game, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah. And I did three sittings. It was 20 hours to get through the first playthrough. And I did not do nearly all, you know, most of the side quests. I just stuck with the main story to finish that. I was very, very impressed with this. There's a lot of other side things to do in the game. You can play a bartender. You can earn money doing that. You can run a nightclub. Yes, a nightclub. You can be a doctor in this game. This is what I'm talking about with the Yakuza style gameplay. There's a lot of stuff to do here. You never, I was never bored at all right down to the final boss encounter and the wave after wave of enemies and the leveling up grind system, I couldn't get enough. And the one thing that shocked me the most is I'm out there in the buggy, out in the wasteland in the middle of nowhere, and I get a treasure map and I was like, oh, okay, you can go, you know, this treasure appears. So I follow the map, I get to a certain section on the map, and it's a cassette tape that I can play in my buggy, you know, for music. And so I thought, okay, I'll, I'll turn it on to that, and I'm driving off, and I'm like, wait a second, what is that, what is this music, I know this music, Fantasy Star Online music, so you can collect so much, so many crazy things, you can connect, collect cassette tapes of music from past Sega games, there's all these amazing past references to Sega games, so there's like Super Monkey Ball music in there, so you're going through the desert, uh, you know, as a bunch of punks, listening to Super Monkey Ball, it's ridiculous. There's also an arcade that opens up in town and you can go uh, and find arcade games like OutRun and bring it back to the arcade and play it. Shenmue style, Yakuza style. This is amazing. There's casinos in these games. There's bars in these games. There's so many shops. There's so many people that you can help and do many different things for. M never mind the constant getting attacked by enemies. There's nothing short to do in this game. And I gotta talk about the characters here, the character models and the graphics. Some would say that the graphics are very simplistic. I beg to differ. I think in the cinematics, the, the characters look really, really good. The in-game models are excellent. I think that they took the manga and they translated it into these characters completely well. I think the characters, they did the characters a lot of justice. How is the music? The music is great uh, as a background. It feels great. The hard rock is always kicking in. I like the characters. I like the story. I love the blood and guts. I love the ultra violence. As you can see, I love this game. I really did. And I went in with a very, with very low expectations thinking I was just going to beat up a bunch of enemies. I did not think this was going to be the game that it is. And I'm so happy that I got to play it. I think for people who don't know Fist of the North Star, they're going to be like, what is this game? 
What is this about? Let me tell you, do some research to a, a wiki page or something like that and find out about the backstory of the character Kenshiro, all of the characters, and you'll find there's a very rich backstory here. For people who are fans of Fist of the North Star, you have to buy this game, without a doubt. This is old school anime done right. They got it so good in this game. Yeah, I'm gonna have to give this game a nine out of 10. It absolutely deserves it. And I am praying for a sequel. In fact, I am gonna go back to my game and I'm gonna do a new game plus and go through it again. That is how much I absolutely really loved it. And I'm gonna stream it this week as well on the show because I was that moved for sure. So anyways, guys, until next time.